Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to Gearblocks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the DAF 33. This is a car that we've been building over the course of a couple of streams because it contains something quite complex. Underneath the hood of this build we have a fully automatic CVT transmission. Now this is loosely based off the real world DAF 33 because it too contained a CVT transmission. However, this is not perfectly accurate. So let's do a quick little look around the outside so you can see all of the angles and a little license plate denoting what kind of car it is. And before we tear into this to show the transmission, I do want to take it around a little bit for a drive to go over the controls and how this car works. So, on the inside, you will notice miles per hour, RPM, and CVT. Uh, this was accomplished by syncing a screen into the dash here, so it is a little bit glitchy, but it is just fine while driving. And you'll notice right now it says zero. As we start driving, the engine RPM will go to 3,400, and it should stay roughly around that area. As it's doing so, the CVT will start to engage and you'll see this number counting up. You can kind of consider this number to be the gear that the car is in. This goes from 0 to 0.5. So if you count the hundredths place down here, this car has about 50 gears to work with. Starting this car up is just like all of my others. You hold G and that will get the engine revved parking brake is one and you'll notice it moves this little slider a being for automatic and everything else does for the most part what you'd expect it to w a s and d accelerate brake steer however there is one addition to this car and that is reverse is through an electric motor that's buried down here you can actually see it right there because this engine and transmission is so complicated, I didn't really want to work in a reverse gear. So for the time being, there's just a little electric motor in here that allows us to back up when we need to. Also, like a lot of my cars, we have headlights, which turns on a little dash light so you can see the screens in the dark. And tail lights and headlights turn on. The other lights are on the steering, so A and D do the turn signals and S does the brakes. So let's actually get to do some driving. I'm gonna turn around here so we can actually get onto the race course and we'll get going. On the track now, we can start accelerating after we turn off our parking brake. And you'll see the engine jumps up to 3,400 and it stays right around there and our CVT starts to climb up and we just accelerate. There is no like major shifting of gears. It's just the CVT sliding into position, keeping us at this constant RPM and keeping us at a constant acceleration. Now there is a little pull from the steering. Uh, it likes to pull left slightly, but that's pretty easy to compensate for. And other than that, it just drives so smoothly. As you slow down, the CVT will start to lower as well. And you just get to drive. It's honestly weird driving this car in comparison to some of my other builds. Because a lot of my other builds do have shifting. It's something you have to think about. And with this, because it's all automated, it honestly feels like you're driving a video game car. One kind of comical note I can also add to this car is because it is an inline four, it has the same engine size as my last motorcycle did. I'm not sure how much more commentary I can really add because this is one of those cars that 
is hard to explain without just driving it because it's just smooth it's so nice it's so perfect how the CVT is able to just keep that constant acceleration there is a little bit of hiccup here and there when you're uh, braking in a corner or when you first accelerate but while you're just driving it you don't even notice that it's doing anything and it's just honestly wonderful Now the steering on this is a little lackluster and that's solely because it has a body on it and it's a little top heavy as a result. We were just kind of going for a like family car sedan because we were like, oh yeah, it's CVT. Let's do inline four CVT front wheel drive and just make it like a little family car just for the fun of it. Just for the aesthetic of like the expectation that CVT is supposed to be underpowered because it is a friction based system. <laughs> but this thing honestly turned out better than I expected it to. The top speed for this car is about 135, I believe. The CVT cuts out about 110. However, you still have some level of RPM that the engine can increase to 4,000. So you get a little bit extra there that the CVT really isn't involved with. We should actually hit close to the top speed here, or at least see the CVT max out here. 0 0.45, 0 0.46, 0 0.47, 8. There we go, 0 0.5. That's the top of the CVT, and everything else is just the engine revving. And the clanking you're hearing actually isn't the CVT. It is the... Um, front CV joint for the front right wheel. I don't know why the right wheel in particular has that clanking issue, but it does. And we're definitely going to hit the top speed going down this. There we go. I have to be careful in this corner because this one's really tight. I do have to slow down. As much as I would love to hit the 130 or 135 this thing is capable of, I need to be able to come through this corner nice and clean. thing just it just goes it's so smooth i i don't have anything to add because there's just there's, like there's no problems that i have with this car there's like no complaints it is kind of turned out close to perfect And there we go, finishing out our lap. Now let's take this back to the little parking area and we'll tear it apart so you can actually see what's inside. And one little nifty feature of this car is the entire shell is removable. So once we're actually inside here, you can see the CVT itself is a disc and ball design. And the springs here are actually what returns it to its lower gear. So effectively what's happening is you have an inline four that is powering 
the disc. The disc rotates, the ball rolls across the surface of the disc on a certain set circumference. The ball and the circumference that it's rolling on the disc act as two different gears. As that's happening, you also have a little centrifugal clutch here that is measuring the motor's RPM. Once the RPM pushes past a certain point, this engages, drives some gears, and begins to pull. Let me actually pin this real quick. And begins to pull this entire assembly forward. This changes the circumference that the ball is rolling on the disc, effectively changing the gear. And then as you decelerate or let off the gas or even hit the brakes, these pistons with the springs begin to send the ball back to its original position. All of this is working automatically and it just kind of works the balance between the spring pressure and the centrifugal clutch pushing it forward, makes it transition extremely smoothly. Then power comes out of this gear onto these two gears that allow it to slide and that all runs down and into the wheels. And that's effectively how this works. So if I delete this pin we put on here a second ago, I can just drive it around like this. And you can see as we accelerate, the ball begins to slide forward. And as we come to a stop, it will slide back. And without the extra weight of the chassis, this thing is significantly faster and can honestly do some impressive zero to sixties. So if we come out here and just like a drag race, you can see the front tires just lifting up really hard. The CVT just slides to the front. And right about there, we're at our top gear, doing 106. And yeah, that little power pack is just pushing this thing along and it's so lovely. It's, I, I honestly could not have asked for better. This build came out almost perfectly. So with that being said, I am going to end this here. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like. If you have suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing, please share this episode with a friend. And until next time, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. Peace.